is your sense of how often we will need to get revaccinated once we get fully vaccinated? Well, Emily, thanks for having me back. Um, yeah, indeed, it is. It is good news that uh, we've we've begun to see some good evidence of uh, antibody protection lasting at least six months. That's as long as we've had to test it, uh, and we expect that we will get more and more data, both uh, from that earlier study and from the larger studies that we did later in 2020. So lots more to come on that, but that's encouraging. And as for the variants. I mean, look, our immune system is trained to detect many hundreds of threats on a daily basis, and variants are going to look like slightly different threats, and in some cases, they've shown that they can evade the immune response uh, partially. But what we've shown so far is that some of the immune system continues to attack the variants, and we're going to have to keep a close eye on which variants are beginning to exist and as you know, we've also started developing, uh, just in case we need them, additional mRNA vaccines that will target some of these variants. So whether it's uh, a variant vaccine or the original vaccine or some combinations of these, we want to be one or two steps ahead of the virus as it manifests changes to fight back against our immune systems. Now, Moderna has been testing the vaccine on children ages six months to 12 years. My children are in that grade age group. What do you know so far? And when do you think the soonest is that kids in that age group will be vaccinated? Well, you know, these trials are done in a very uh, prescribed way. Uh, and, and so we don't get uh, early information. When we get the information is when we generally disclose it to the public, uh, as we did in the, in the main human trials that we did last year, phase one, phase two, and phase three. And so this will be the same. There was going to go through rigorous testing. So I don't want to give a sense of when that might be concluded, but suffice it to say that we've said when we first entered into this that over the coming months, uh, we expect to begin to gather data and share them to the public as to whether we see differences uh, and, and, and the efficacy safety. I should say that in the younger population, we're also testing some lower doses, because we expect that perhaps some of those will be as efficacious, uh, and, and we'd like to make sure we get the right dose. Uh, and so, you know, more to come on that, but over the coming months, I think, is a reasonable expectation. I can't be more specific than that. Interesting. Okay. Now, it's hard to believe that Moderna was just a startup a few years ago that you started building in-house at Flagship, your venture capital firm that's focused on biotechnology. You've also got another company, Kaleido, that's been working on an oral treatment to fight COVID that's also seen some promising results. How confident are you that if you don't get vaccinated or, or, or even if you do and you get a serious case of COVID, that a drug will be able to save you? Look, I think that everything we can do based on biomedical research uh, to uh, delay, deter, attack this virus, we need to do. And what you're seeing is this industry that's largely been out of the, the mainstream, let's say, conscience of, of, of the world, uh, which is the biotech industry, is suddenly kind of being called into action to provide any and all means to beat back this virus. So certainly Kaleido, another one of our companies, there's yet another one called Avello that showed some very interesting data and their treatments. So I think that, that there's going to be many, many different treatments. We need to let the science dictate our decision making. We need evidence in controlled trials. And as we get that, I definitely believe that the arsenal of approaches to beat back this virus, even if it does infect people, will grow, will grow very rapidly. Now, you've been hiring a number of new people as CEO partners, if you will. You hired Mike Nally, who used to work at Merck, Chris Austin from the National Institutes of Health. How will this new talent help you on your quest to, you know, develop new technology that will essentially save lives? You know, where does this take you next? Well, Emily, uh, as you mentioned in your introduction, Flagship Pioneering, which is the firm that I co-founded and lead based in Cambridge, Massachusetts, it's really a new type of company that itself invents and launches new companies. And we've been doing this for some 20 years, but over the last few years, 
we've scaled up our operations so that at any given time, we have some 12, 12 to 14 now companies that are all distinct platforms of their own that are attacking one or another aspect of health across all disease states, across all aspects of medicine, but also sustainability. We are very active in the agricultural technology, nutritional health area. So what you realize when you do this systematically is that it's one thing to make the early inventions and conceive of these transformative platforms. It's another thing to actually create and launch and grow a company that can maximally derive impact, deliver impact, and also derive value from this activity. And that depends very heavily on forming a team, a team of pioneers, and the leadership for that team. And over the years, you could imagine we've probably hired 100, 150 different folks into CEO roles, let alone all the other uh, leadership roles. And what we've learned is that it takes a particular kind of individual together with the supporting team to lead these projects. And we're finding some of them coming from some of the leading pharmaceutical companies like Mike Nally, who we announced joining us just last week to lead one of our very exciting next generation companies called Generate Biomedicines, or Chris Austin leaving the NIH having led one of their, uh, tra one of their big translational uh, 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 institutes, uh, leaving with his medical background and leadership background to come and take on this this role of CEO partner. So we've got a lot, we've got about seven such folks we've brought on board in the last nine months. They're each leading their own platforms. And we're gonna learn a lot about how to get better at better at matching the human capital, the inventive capital, the ideas, and the financial capital to be able to create these disruptive breakthrough platform companies.